Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create programs using JGRASP, which is the editor that we use in this class. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of JGRASP and how it works, and then we're going to go through the steps that are involved in creating a finished program. We're going to talk about how to write programs in JGRASP, how to compile them, and then how to run them. So let's take a look at JGRASP. If you haven't already, downloaded JGRASP on your computer, you should go to uh, Blueboard and go to the external links uh, page for this class and go to the JGRASP page and download it and install it on your computer. It's great and it's free and it's the program we use in this class so you should get comfortable using it. Once you've got it set up and you start it up, you will see the JGRASP window here. So let's go over the basic parts first. Up here at the top, you'll see the menu bar and the button bar where you'll see a lot more buttons once we create a new program. And then over here, we have the uh, utility pane where you can either, uh, if you're in the browse mode, you can see a list of files and that's usually how you find your programs to edit them. If you are using the debugger to fix errors in your program, you will see a different kind of window. Um, that has the output from your debugger. So over here on the middle of your page, the biggest part is the uh, program editing window where you'll see the code for the programs that you're writing. And then down here below, this is where we would see the output um, window. And that's where you'll see the output from either the compiler or from uh, when you run your programs. So Let's look at how to create a program. The way to start is you need to go to the File menu, choose New, and then choose Java, because we're going to be creating a Java program. And notice that we have a lot more buttons in our button bar now. And the buttons that we're going to be using most of the time are these ones here, these three buttons here. Um, the first one, the green plus, is for compiling. And compiling is when you take the code that you've written and you translate it into machine language that the computer can understand. And then once you've compiled your program, you're going to run it by using the Run button, uh, and that actually runs it on your computer. And the last button here that we're going to take a look at from time to time is the Debug program uh, button, and that's used to try to fix the errors in your program. And we'll talk more about using the debugger in another lesson. So you have uh, created a new program and then the next step is to write the code and I've already uh, copied and pasted the code from the hello program in your book but in your case you would normally have to type the code in so let's get that copied in here um, I want you to notice a couple of things about the way that programs look in JGRASP one of the things that you'll notice is that some of the words have color um, and that's called color syntaxing. And uh, that's just JGRASP's way of helping you notice what the different parts of your program are. You can see that there's purple for keywords. Those are special words that are um, part of the Java language. There is uh, orange for comments. Those are little notes that you can write in your program that don't actually run. They just help explain what's going on. And then you can also see green here. Um, green is for strings. And a string is just a sequence of letters and numbers um, that go together. The other thing that you might notice over on the left hand side is this blue, um, these blue symbols. And that's something that's unique to JGRASP. It's called CSD, which is a code structure diagram for your program. And it just shows you a little bit more about uh, how the different parts of your program work together. It's just a way visually of seeing how your program is set up. So we've written our program now. And the uh, next step, once you start writing your program, and it's really something you should do a lot when you're writing your program, is to save your program. And the way that you save that is by using the Save button over here. It looks like a disk and click that 
you will get a dialog box asking you to choose a location. And I'm just going to go to my home directory and save it on the desktop, which is a good place to put your programs. And I like to create a new folder for every project that I'm working on. Because once you start getting into programs that have lots of files, then you're going to want to uh, keep everything organized. So you create a new folder, click on it, you can give it a new name. I'm going to call it hello. Double click on the folder to uh, enter that folder and then uh, go down and look at the name of your file. Now notice JGRASP has already given my file a name. And in fact, that's the name that we have to use. In Java, the name of your file has to be the same as the name of the class that's inside it, which we'll take a look at. But just know that the name that JGRASP picks for your file is uh, almost always the one that you have to use. So we've got our location, we've got our file name, we'll click Save. You can see up here the name of my file and also its location. So now our program is saved. And that's something that you should do again save about every five minutes because you never know when accidents are going to happen. Um, before we get to compiling and running, let's just take a look at the basic structure of most Java files. Every Java file has a couple of parts um, that are common to all files. One of the first parts that you'll notice is that there's this public class. And every Java file contains one public class. If you want to think about each file as being um, a part of your uh, overall solution, then the public class is simply the name of that part. All the parts of your solution work together, but each part has to have its own name. And in this case, the name of our public class is Hello Printer. Uh, all of the code for this file is going to live inside this public class. Also notice that you see this open curly brace and this closed curly brace. Down on your keyboard you can find the curly braces um, right above the square brackets which are over on the right hand side of your keyboard. If you hit shift square bracket you get a curly brace. And curly braces in Java are kind of like bookends. Um, code lives in between sets of curly braces. In this case all the code for hello printer lives inside this set of curly braces. Notice when I mouse over one curly brace, the one that matches it lights up. And so it's important that you have matching sets of curly braces. The other thing I want you to notice is that there's this public static void main string args. Um, every Java project has to have at least one um, public static void main. This is an example of something called a method, which is simply an action that your class can take. In this case, public static void main is the action that gets taken when you run your program. And your code has to look like this, so you will very quickly get in the habit of just typing out public static void main string args, and then including, again, another set of curly braces. These are the curly braces for your public static void main. And all of the actions that you want this um, method to take are going to be inside that curly braces. In this case, we just have one action, which is this print statement. So let's take a look at that too, because most commands in Java have um, a similar form. In this case, um, we are um, giving a command to a object called system.out, which is a little strange looking, but it's really just Java's way of referring to the standard output for your computer, which in this case is your screen. So what we're saying here is screen, and then a dot, and then the name of the action, which is print line. Uh, print line is shorthand for the command print line, um, which prints whatever we put in the parentheses out on the screen. And since we're going to be printing a string, we have to also put it in quotation marks. And the last thing to notice is the end, which is a semicolon. Every Java statement ends in a semicolon. That's how your Java program knows that it's reached the end of the statement. So this is an example of an entire Java command. If we wanted to add another print statement, we could just go down to the next line. Again, we're giving a command to system.out. We're telling it to print. And 
we're going to tell it to print another statement. So we finished writing our program. Notice that when we made changes to our program, a little asterisk pops up here. And that's just your way of telling that your program has been edited, but it hasn't yet been saved. So a good habit to get into before you compile is always hitting the Save button. But just so you know, when you hit the Compile button, um, JGrasp is going to save your program for you anyway before you compile. So let's hit the Compile button and see what happens. One of the things that you'll notice is that you start to see output down here. This is the Compile Output window and it will show you any messages, especially any error messages, if there are any compiler errors in your program. We're going to talk about errors in another lesson. But if there aren't any errors in your program, then you will see this message here, Operation Complete. It's a good sign. That means that your program doesn't have any errors and it's ready to run. So remember, the way we run our program is by using this Run button here. So when I click that, you will again see more output down here. In this case, this is our run output instead of our compile output, but you will see that Java has run your program. And inside, in between these uh, blue lines, you will see all of the output from your program. In this case, both of the printout statements uh, printed, and then our operation is complete. If you ever have any runtime errors, any errors during the running of your program, you'll also see those down here. And we'll, again, we'll talk about more about that when we get to errors in another lesson. But uh, in a nutshell, in this lesson we've covered an overview of JGrasp, and we've also talked about how to create new programs, and how to save them, how to compile them, and how to run them. So you should be all set.